Dear readers, some of you are pushing me to continue with the Las Vegas shooting story while others are asking to know what to make of the release of files pertaining to President Kennedy's assassination. I appreciate that you are interested and are unsatisfied with official explanations. My answer is that we already know, thanks to exhaustively researched books such as James W. Douglas JFK and The Unspeakable Simon Schuster, 2008, far more than is in the released files. My answer is also that it doesn't matter what we know or what the facts are, the official story will never be changed. For example, we know as an absolute indisputable fact that Israel intentionally attacked the USS Liberty inflicting enormous casualties on U.S. Navy personnel, and the U.S. government continues the cover-up that it was all a mistake despite unequivocal statements to the contrary by the Moore Commission, led by Admiral Tom Moore, former Chief of Naval Operations and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. My answer also is that time is better spent in trying to prevent conspiracies in the making, such as the endless stream of lies and accusations against Russia that are turning a friendly country into an enemy and renewing the risk of nuclear Armageddon. Indeed, the biggest conspiracy theory of the present time is the one issuing from the military security complex, the Democratic National Committee, and the prostitute media that Russia in collusion with Donald Trump hacked the U.S. presidential election. Time to buy old U.S. gold coins The Russian government knows that this is a lie, and when they see a lie repeated endlessly now for one year without a shred of evidence to support it, the Russian government naturally concludes that Washington is preparing the American people for war. I cannot imagine a more reckless and irresponsible policy than destroying Russia's trust in Washington's intentions. As Putin said, the main lesson life has taught him is that if a fight is unavoidable, strike first. JFK and the Unspeakable James W. Douglas Best Price $6.79 Buy New $11.53 As of 11.12 EDT Details If you really want to know who killed President Kennedy and why, read JFK and The Unspeakable. Yes, there are other carefully researched books that you can read. Douglas concludes that Kennedy was murdered because he turned to peace. He was going to work with Khrushchev to end the Cold War. He refused the CIA U.S. air cover for the Bay of Pigs invasion. He rejected the Joint Chiefs Operation Northwoods, a plan to conduct false flag attacks on Americans that would be blamed on Castro to justify regime change. He refused to reappoint General Lyman Lemnitzer as chairman of the Joint Chiefs. He told U.S. Marine Commandant General David Shoup that he was taking the U.S. out of Vietnam. He said after his re-election he was going to break the CIA into 1,000 pieces. All of this threatened the power and profit of the military security complex and convinced military security elements that he was soft on communism and a threat to U.S. national security. The film of the motorcade taken by Zapruder shows that the bullet that killed Kennedy hit him from the front, blowing out the back of his head. You can see Kennedy's wife Jackie reaching from the back seat onto the trunk of the limo to recover the back of his head. Other tourist films show moments before the shot the Secret Service agents being ordered off of the presidential limo so that a clear shot at Kennedy is possible. The film shows one Secret Service agent protesting the order, the man who killed Ken. Roger Stone best price $10.88 by new $9.46 as of 0236 EDT details the medical evidence that Kennedy was hit from behind was falsified by medical doctors under orders. Navy medical corpsman who helped the Navy doctors with the autopsy testified that they were dismayed by orders from Admiral Calvin Galloway to ignore entry wounds from the front. One of the corpsmen testified all at once I understood that my country was not much better than a third world country. From that point on in time, I have had no trust, no respect for the government. Dr. Charles Crenshaw, one of the doctors forced to lie, later broke his silence with a book and was rewarded with a fierce media campaign to discredit him. LT. Commander William Pitzer, director of the audiovisual department of the Bethesda Naval Hospital, filmed the autopsy. The film clearly showed the entry wound from the front. Pitzer was found shot to death on the floor of the production studio of the National Naval Medical Center. It was ruled a suicide, as always. J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI knew that Oswald, who Douglas believes was on the payroll of both the CIA and FBI, was sent to Cuba by the CIA in order to establish the story for the Patsy role Oswald was unaware was being prepared for him. However, Hoover, along with LBJ, Earl Warren and the members of the Warren Commission understood that it was impossible to tell the American people that their president has been assassinated by the U.S. military and U.S. security agencies. At a dicey time of the Cold War clearly it would have been reckless to destroy Americans' trust in their own government. Finian Cunningham presents a summary of much of the accumulated evidence.
All experts long ago concluded that the Warren Commission report is a cover-up. I am not an expert. I have not spent 30 years or longer, as has Douglas, investigating, interviewing witnesses, tracking down unexplained deaths of witnesses, and piecing together the available voluminous information. If you want to know what happened, put down your smartphones, close your video screens, and read Douglas or a similar book. The Best of Paul Craig Roberts